the chief executive officer of Smell ID, Mark Straub, says there are likely to be more synthetic identity fraud in Africa this year as attacks combine hyper-realistic deepfakes with stolen ID credentials obtained via the web or data leaks. Now, in a breakdown of the 2024 Digital Identity Fraud in Africa report, he notes more comprehensive strategies are required to counter the change in tactics of fraudsters. We started to see over the last year or 18 months is as the macroeconomic environment changed, companies were spending less money on acquiring new users and more money and time and energy focusing on engagement of their existing customers. And as they were doing that, we're seeing more payments, more volume within those accounts, more usage of identity tools, but also more fraud. Mm. So let's get into uh, some of the key findings this time of this report and what, what's the report saying on fraud? Basically, what we're saying is that the amount of fraud in Africa continues to grow. It's evolving and the tactics of fraudsters are changing. Mm. And now companies need to approach this question not with a single solution, not just with a single tool, but actually a comprehensive strategy that includes modern technologies like AI. Mm. So, yeah, because I was going to get to that on this scale of identity fraud and how AI uh, more or less uh, exacerbates the challenge. So what we're starting to see now is that historically banks, fintechs, companies that deal with money have done basic KYC. They've done the required amounts to maintain their compliance. But that's not generally enough. And we actually see that companies that use some aspect of biometrics, for example, a selfie check, a liveness check, those companies have 4x less fraud or they're 4x safer than companies that just do basic textual checks. AI changes the game even further because now even those additional kinds of checks that companies are doing, whether it's documents, selfies, liveness, they also now face the threat of AI. So there are even more widely available tools for fraudsters to gather up your information from the internet and put that information together in something that looks like you, sounds like you, yeah. maybe even has the same ID number as you. Yeah, because deep fakes uh, definitely even for some of uh, people who are a bit more educated in, 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 in terms of the old ways of identifying a lot of these fraud patterns. But let's get to the peculiarities that you are seeing in Africa and mm -hmm. what types of fraud would you see are most prevalent in this region? I guess the good news is that most fraud is still relatively simplistic. It's still relatively petty. So the vast majority of the fraud that we block is people sending us bad ID numbers, expired ID numbers, documents that have been tampered with, faces that don't match the document or the ID authority that we're checking against. We block that stuff relatively easily. We do it tens of thousands of times a day. Mm -hmm. And we have hundreds of customers that use us to protect themselves. The new challenge is that even those tools that people have put in place before may not be enough. And now you need to start using more sophisticated AI or machine learning based models. Those are the things we're now investing in heavily for our customers and making sure that they've got access to as they're building their user journeys online. So, so let's get to the trends that you're seeing here. And I'm curious to know how first the regions across Africa compare in terms of the trends uh, uh, some of these forces are putting in place here. And also uh, looking at Africa and its peculiarities and how that differs from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one thing to keep in mind, and we talk about this in the report, is that you know we, we really understand and, and, and think about the different regions of Africa differently. They are different. The systems that are in place are different. The compliance regimes are different. The document types that people use are quite different. We've actually seen that in Nigeria, because of the strong national ID system that's been put in place, the historic BBN system that's been put in place, there are a lot of modern tools already. So onboarding in Nigeria can be relatively quick. And if a company puts in place different tools in their journey, they can do a pretty good job here in Nigeria. In other markets we've seen, there is less digital tools. And so you have to rely more on physical documents. And then what really matters is using computer vision tools like the ones we have to spot fakes in those documents. We've seen a lot of attacks of the South African National ID. That's the green book down in South Africa. We've seen a lot of attacks against the Kenyan National ID. In Kenya, there's uh, historically old laminated IDs, and now they have a new modern ID. So whenever you see these countries in transition from old ID types to new ID types, that still leaves the door open for attacks. But that's, the, that's why we have tools in place to help companies solve those problems.
Because now I'm looking at the trends that you're spotting here and I'm trying to imagine your data set and methodology and how you're coming about these findings. Mm -hmm. So we, we took a hard look at this and we put together this new report. We've announced we've now done 100 million verifications across Africa. So that's real scale over the last seven years. And in this latest report, rather than just talking about onboarding of new customers, we looked at all the different types of fraud that we see. We broke them down into examples and we put visuals of those examples in our report so people can look at it. And these things range from document fraud, uh, tampered documents, selfies that don't match the relative uh, person in question, or even uh, spoof attempts, including computer generated AI spoof attempts. So we talk about all these different types of fraud and then we actually present data about the percentage of the attacks that we see for each of these methodologies and then where across Africa we see them. Now, I'm looking at the continent here and I'm looking at the, the plans here to have regional integration in terms of looking at the African continent of region area and uh, cross-border payments being put in place here. And I'm trying to imagine from your report, I can see that payments, uh, the payment fraud was uh, very prevalent uh, last year. And I'm trying to imagine the, how you see this being tackled uh, for a continent that has aspirations of regional integration and we're seeing such a high number, I think 42% looking at your report mm -hmm. uh, last year where, and we know that payments and transactions are going to be a very key part of putting the building blocks of the AFCFT together and how you think uh, uh, the, the continent can guard against this type of fraud. Yeah, so what we saw especially in the, the third and fourth quarters of last year was that um, the num for, so for the transactions that we are involved in where someone's using our tools to try to prevent fraud, we saw in certain months as much as 40% of the attempted transactions that we were processing that we had to reject because of potential fraud. And uh, what we're seeing is that, um, again, as uh, there's more accounts that have already been created and there's more money in those accounts, fraudsters are now trying to get access to those accounts. Okay. And so payments is one of the ways that money moves, especially between industries like mobile money versus banking or fintechs and mobile money. And so I think what's really important is collaboration between industry uh, and collaboration within industry. So between banks, between banks and fintechs, what we're trying to do, because we have a, a very large uh, number of customers in fintechs and now increasingly a large number of bank customers as well, is make sure that we can take the lessons learned, the, the types of attacks we're seeing and even known bad actors and leverage some of that data and those insights across our customer base. And so we're, we're beginning to do that now with just some of the tools and the machine learning that we do in our algorithms, but we'll be doing that even more in 2024 with our customers. And that was the Chief Executive Officer of Smile ID, Mark Strobe, speaking there. And on that note, it's a wrap on today's show. Many thanks for watching.